So a lot of parents and a lot of children grow up thinking that they cause type 1 diabetes to themselves, that they're at fault, that, that it's either something that they did to themselves that caused type 1 diabetes, or the other story is that type 1 diabetes is purely genetic, mm. right? So that, so on one hand, you have, no, this came from your parents. Mm -hmm. On the other hand is, no, I caused it myself. Mm -hmm. And then the truth may be somewhere in the middle. So you tell me, <laughs> where, what is responsible for the development mm -hmm. of type 1 diabetes and initiating this insulin, I'm sorry, this uh, autoimmune reaction? So while the uh, actual cause of type 1 diabetes isn't fully understood at this point, um, researchers have looked at cause at, at causational factors like genetics and like family history. And you can see patterns in family lines where, you know, a close family member or relative does also have type one diabetes. So there is some link to a genetic background, a genetic factor. There are also, uh, there's also a lot of research that shows the um, connection between environmental factors. And that could be anything from viral exposures um, to even dietary influences. So there are many studies out there that are showing a connection between um, the early introduction of, of cow's milk and dairy products into a diet that can influence the um, longer term impact on type 1 diabetes development. Um, the other viruses that are looked at are um, Epstein-Barr virus. Coxsackie virus. Coxsackie virus. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Funny names. But you're right. I actually find this uh, this idea that uh, there's an autoimmune, there's a genetic predisposition mm -hmm. that you may have inquired, acquired, but yet even if you do have that genetic predisposition, your behavior, aka your environment, can act like an on-off switch. Mm -hmm. And if your environment is set up for success, then that means that the switch is turned off and you may never develop the actual autoimmune condition, even though you may have a genetic predisposition towards it. Mm -hmm. But if your environment is not set up for success and or just like you're saying, you you know have a susceptibility to the Epstein-Barr virus, the Coxsackie virus, um, or you have a high intake of dairy products and meat actually from a young age, that can also increase your risk for turning the light switch on such that the genetic predisposition then turns into an actual autoimmune condition mm -hmm. later in life. Mm -hmm. One of the interesting things that I've noticed from people that I've talked with, we've, we work with many, many families and I've seen many families in the hospital and a lot of families will identify that there was a virus or some sort of viral expression, the child had a virus in the months prior to their diagnosis of type 1 diabetes. And oftentimes they'll describe it as sort of a lingering virus or something that the child just couldn't shake. Um, and so I often ask people who I'm working with, like, did you notice, do you remember, like recall back, do you remember, you know, six, 12 months prior to the diagnosis? Do you remember any sort of viral experience that, or virus that the child had or some sort of illness that took them out for a little while? Um, and that often the answer is yes, they can recall that. And so that's interesting. That's just very anecdotal. It's just something that I've observed and something to think about, um, you know, because there's really, um, unfortunately in that situation, there's not much that can be done. It's, it's a very, you know, an autoimmune experience is, um, very difficult to control. It's very difficult to, you know, identify when that might express itself or happen and, but you can look for connections. And um, one of the things about type one diabetes that we've learned and we've experienced is that it can become a very, it actually can become a very manageable situation. Definitely. And that's where, you know, yes, it's very easy to go down the path of how did this happen? Why did this happen? Especially as a parent, you know, really trying to understand what you could have done differently. And most of the, most of the time the answer is nothing. Um, and so that's something that we talk about a lot in our coaching program and working with our families is sort of, you know, how to take that, um, the, the diagnosis itself and then move forward and, and really focus on living with type one diabetes in a way that, that you can create a lifestyle that really works within your family. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm glad you brought that up actually, because I remember when I was first diagnosed with type one diabetes, I spent the better part of the first year, uh, just constantly asking myself, what did I do wrong? Mm. 
what did I do wrong? And I was beating myself up every single day. I was just like, God, I should, shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done that. But the truth is that it's just a guessing game. There's no, there's no real hard evidence that says, oh, well, when you ate this meal, that actually caused type 1 diabetes. It's, it's not that simple. Right. Point being is that, you know, if you are the parent of a newly diagnosed child with type one diabetes, uh, don't spend time beating yourself up. Don't beat your child up. Rather, take Kylie's advice to heart and just say, you know what? There is a beautiful way to live with autoimmune type one diabetes and learn how to inject the right amount of insulin, uh, both for basal purposes and for bolus purposes. Mm -hmm and uh, use that to control your blood glucose in addition to a plant-based diet, in addition to an active daily uh, regimen of exercise. And when you do it and you put all the pieces of the puzzle together, blood glucose control becomes very stable and you can actually dramatically minimize the risk for future chronic diseases uh, that often develop in people with type 1 diabetes who have uncontrolled blood glucose. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And there are some nuances with kids living with type 1 diabetes that make that can make blood glucose management a little bit more challenging. And um, again, what we try to do is we help to break down the concepts of insulin resistance and why blood glucose variability happens and how it's related to the foods that your child is eating, as well as how you can use tools like movement and exercise and play to help manage blood glucose and keep blood glucose as stable as possible. I've heard a lot of parents that I've talked to, I've heard their doctors or their endocrinologists will say, oh, don't worry, type one diabetes doesn't change your life. It won't change anything. Your child can still do everything that they were doing before, which is very true. There's a lot of things that your child will still be able to do and, you know, you can still have a very fulfilling and loving and happy life living with type 1 diabetes. But the management of type 1 diabetes does take a lot of attention and a lot of precision. And what we do is try to help to identify where the patterns are so that you can make different choices and help your child really thrive living with type 1 diabetes so that it's not as confusing. And when you take away the confusion, you also take away some of the fear. And for a child living with a condition that is causing them to maybe feel different throughout the day, if their blood glucose goes high or it goes too low, that can be very scary. And what we aim to do is really help to maintain blood glucose um, levels in a very healthy way and a very healthy range as much time as possible so that it eliminates or reduces the confusion. And that's how you start to kind of feel like you're getting back into that um, you know, back into some routines so that it's not as consuming for you as the parent. Right. So type 1 diabetes doesn't sort of take over your entire mental space and mm -hmm. dominate your kid's life so they can live a normal life. Mm -hmm. You can live a normal life and you, yeah, you just have to add sort of some basic rules about managing type 1 diabetes mm -hmm. uh, into the daily regimen. Mm -hmm. But once it's there and it's manageable, then you can get on with your life and you can do other things. Mm -hmm.